We recently covered the enigmatic megalith known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba within Peru, showing how this rock was in fact abandoned, abandoned midway through being harvested of blocks to be used in the nearby polygonal masonry, with many other sites, many still strewn with blocks cut with a natural appearing face but a right-angled interlocking body. Yet upon the white rock still remained other mysterious patterns, such as that of the 90-degree steps cut into the stone. We have identified this kind of stone cutting previously, such as at Machu Picchu, clearly used to help construct the polygonal walls themselves, but also at other, until now unexplained, unfinished stones many found throughout Peru. Naupa Iglesia, for example, found just outside the astonishing ancient ruins of Olente Tambo, a mysterious megalith that many, including us, previously presumed was possibly some elaborate deliberate carving, a throne, or possibly, like the false door, meters away, an ancient portal of some form. However, when one approaches said rock with the same eye as that of the white rock, one quickly finds matching stonework finished and installed as that of the water fountain found within Olente Tambo itself, thus further supporting our hypothesis of these types of stone cuts and indeed step patterning found upon them is indicative of unfinished, abruptly abandoned stonework, many left unliberated or strewn among their ancient quarries. As with the many other discoveries made, once one begins to perceive unexplained artifacts of this nature in the correct way, they suddenly make sense, and the supportive evidence simply flows from the hidden into plain sight. How this, or possibly another clearly advanced yet once Stone Age civilization, made the cut marks into the solid pink Aswan granite found upon the unfinished obelisk among many other megalithic blocks found within the Aswan quarry within Egypt, however, is yet another mystery yet to be unraveled but by identifying and distinguishing between what were enormous megalithic block quarries and what were those of the baffling polygonal blocks is, we believe, the correct path to take if one wishes to unravel the mystery of just how this lost civilization operated, what they were constructing, and hopefully explain who they were and indeed where we came from. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling. Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water, as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features Academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders, as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups, who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin. Yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world, that according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed, 
features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features, which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone, only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge, used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, the false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties? Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed, the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly, highly compelling. There are many gems from ancient architecture which can be found nestled amongst the mountains of Peru. One form of these, in which is a particularly fascinating mystery, is the different types and sizes of polygonal masonry found throughout this incredibly ancient landscape. One such site, once named by the Inca after the site, namely Rimac Tabo, was Lima Tabo, now popularly known as Tarawazi. We feel the reason why this site is rarely mentioned, like the many other archaeological and historical anomalies we share on our channel, rarely visited or indeed studied, is due to its truly remarkable, and we feel, almost unique polygonal methodology which can still be found within the walls that make up this little publicly shared ruin, in addition to its seemingly impossible nature, a mystery of construction no one to this day seems to be able to decipher. Found some 80 kilometers west of Cusco, the site was used in antiquity as a ceremonial center and a resting place for the Inca Chasquis. Known as legendary Inca runners, ones who would deliver messages by foot throughout these mountainous regions over long distances at incredible speed. Yet with all the other remarkable polygonal masonry found throughout Peru, we feel that this site was merely adapted by the Inca, and due to its remarkable location and the aforementioned unique polygonal stonework present, was also seen by the Inca as a significant location. The design of the site itself is particularly peculiar, and it does indeed appear to have once been a ceremonial site of some kind, perhaps a tomb. Yet what sort, or indeed how these polygonal sites were once constructed, remains a complete mystery, one which we find highly compelling. Lake Titicaca, undoubtedly a location of extraordinary history a shoreline known by the historical world for a substantial time as somewhere of considerable interest, having been inhabited for an unknown yet incredibly long time, with legends of large antediluvian highly developed cities plummeting to the bottom of its lake, thus claimed as modern locals as revered, yet also the source of life, 
but I digress. Polygonal structures still litter its shores and further afield in other watercourse-connected regions. Known as chilpas, these most intriguing of stone structures still stand here, built with pre-Incan polygonal technological precision, with varying qualities and types of stones, also with stone brick and overall statures of various sizes. They are claimed as spherical burial chambers, yet the precision that went into their construction is evident from without and also from within among the few that have inevitably fell to nature over time. The most concentrated area of these enigmatic structures are located at a site known as Puna Cemetery. The Silustani Cholpas surround an adjacent lagoon to Lake Titicaca, and just like the others found in other sparsely scattered regions, were all built with extraordinary precision, built into perfectly circular towers with a perfect pre-Incan polygonal masonry technique. Therefore, we feel the possibility that they were once made by a now lost civilization has strong evidence to suggest so still present within their builds for all to see. Furthermore, if indeed they were tombs, as claimed, is a possibility we find highly intriguing. For if true, parallel to the fallacious claims of the great tombs of Egypt, then these many still intact structures would still possess the remains of a now lost civilization. It is a possibility and indeed collection of buildings which we find highly intriguing. There are many ancient ruins that were not only beyond the capabilities of the claimed creators, but we postulate were simply re-inhabited, allowing the far more primitive and we feel far more recent inhabitants to flourish, developing these sanctuaries, often heavily fortified temples, to a point where they were able to leave their own mark upon these locations. An archaeological legacy left after the original creators of said sites were seemingly wiped out, with their own archaeological legacies simply washed away by the seas of our planet. These remnants have allowed academia to simply disregard the feat of engineering such incredibly large sites would have required, pinning such efforts to a more suitable candidate. After researching many such sites, backed up by the megalithic accomplishments that they still possess, one will begin to notice a pattern, an illogical and contradictory history for these groups, often invaded by a similarly capable and heavily studied group. The question is, why were a group who were apparently capable of building such a site so easily dominated by another which existed at the same era of history? One would have imagined that if they were indeed the builders of said sites, that they would have also been able to have created substantial defense systems, yet these are invariably absent from nearly all of these sites, with just the weather-resistant megaliths, and indeed the condition of the sites most probably very similar to how they are found today. And Chan Chan is no exception. Believed to have been constructed around 850 AD, based on archaeological finds, subsequently claimed as having been constructed by the Chimu. Although this explanation for the enormous site is conveniently absent any explanation as to how this society achieved such incredible feats of ancient engineering. It became the Chimur Empire's capital city, with an estimated population of 40 to 60,000 people when invaded by the Inca. After the Inca captured the Chamu around 1470 AD, Chan Chan was abandoned and by 1535 AD again became a ruin of history. Surviving into modern day and beyond, while no longer a teeming capital city, Chan Chan was still well known for its great riches and was consequently looted by the Spanish treasure hunters. With an indication of the creator's wealth seen in a 16th century list of items looted from a burial tomb, a treasure equivalent to 80,000 pesos of gold was recovered, nearly 5 million US dollars in gold. Incredibly intricate stone-cut engravings rest alongside massive fortified walls, and there is most likely many other tombs in the site, which not only predate this later re-inhabitation, 
but are probably also filled to the rafters with gold, an expression of these original creators' power, and again, contradictory to the Chamu's claim to such a site. Furthermore, Chan Chan is in a particularly arid section of the coastal desert of northern Peru, and due to the lack of rain in this area, the major source of non-salted water was in the form of rivers carrying surface runoff from the Andes. This runoff allowed for the control of land and water through irrigation systems. The city of Chan Chan spanned 20 square kilometers and had a dense urban center of 6 square kilometers. This contained extravagant ciudadelas, ciudadelas being the large architectural masterpieces which house plazas, storerooms, and burial platforms for the royals. Who were the original builders of Chan Chan? Were they, like we postulate, wiped out during a disaster? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Tambo Machai is an ancient site located within Peru that, like so many others within this remarkable landscape, clearly demonstrates a level of sophistication within its stonework unquestionably far out of the reaches of those who are academically claimed to have been the builders of these remarkable sites. It is a site that not only possesses the same mind-boggling methods of polygonal masonry as that of Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, among many others, but also exhibits an excellent example of the levels of refinement that also went into the building of the irrigation systems throughout the area. Systems that, although unimaginably old, still function perfectly to this day. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding this area, even eclipsing these astonishing feats of ancient engineering, is an area in particular which exhibits some of the most perplexing peculiar feature to be found anywhere in ancient Peru. This area of stone is not merely vitrified, but was, at some point within the distant past, turned to lava. With the limited investigations available, predictably none of which undertaken by funded academics, it has been revealed that this mysterious event did not occur as one would have presumed from a heating from above, but from beneath, or perhaps from within the center of the stonework, successfully melting the stone wall in its entirety into a pool of liquid magma. And although largely overlooked by tourists, and indeed academics alike, the evidence of the stone having once turned to liquid is undeniable. The question then, what turned this stone to liquid? Was it some form of weapon? Or perhaps is this evidence to suggest how polygonal walls were once built? Perhaps these as yet unexplained polygonal walls were constructed with such precision due to a past ability of its builders, able to melt and shape these stones prior to placement. Or perhaps, could this melted stone be evidence of a war? One that occurred between the inhabitants of these ancient ruins and an unknown entity, ultimately resulting in their demise. Perhaps being the reason why these highly advanced, highly capable ancient people from these civilizations not only mysteriously disappeared, but left many a quarry amid ancient stonework seemingly abandoned, left where we find them today. In another area of the world, far away from Peru, there also exists compelling evidence of such a war, having actually once taken place with a possible entity from above. Eerily, this site is claimed as the remnants of a battle with God, specifically surrounding the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sulfur balls embedded among the landscape at this specific site is undoubtedly compelling evidence to support these accounts of war, a holy war undertaken at this specific location that, regardless of holy scripture, was fought with a foe of considerable ability. Exclusively found at these sites are white, pure sulfur balls embedded in the mortar that now, due to their tremendous age, are slowly turning to powder. The sulfur found at these sites has also, intriguingly, been tested from 93% to as high as 98% pure sulfur, with trace metals such as magnesium found within 
that would have produced astounding heat, easily capable of melting stainless steel and indeed the stones within Peru. Furthermore, the brimstone found is significantly different to sulfur found elsewhere, almost as if this brimstone was specifically designed. For example, sulfur from within natural geothermal regions is yellow in crystal form. We find all these evidential factors highly compelling. Robert Benfer, a professor at the University of Missouri, mainly focuses on biological anthropology. However, surprisingly, Robert may be solely responsible for revealing to the world what must be one of the most unusual ancient pyramids ever found on Earth. He had previously found a series of earthworks shaped to resemble orcas, condors, and other animals found dotted around the coastal valleys of Peru. He was looking for more of these peculiar mounds within the valleys north of Lima when he spotted what was initially presumed to be nothing more than a natural volcano, a formation with a crater in the center of the top. However, astonishingly, after closer investigations, Benford discovered that this mound was actually a man-made pyramid, all overgrown and resting in the forests of Peru. Curiously, for some reason within 60s, Professional archaeologists employed by the Peruvian government had already realized that this particularly strange-looking volcano-like mound was indeed an artificial pyramid. But for some reason, this official analysis and subsequent discovery had been quietly buried within the academic archives within Peru. Intrigued by this, Benfer and his team decided to investigate further. As the researchers report in the latest issue of the journal Antiquity, they have dug explorative trenches into the inner crater of the volcano and found a collapsed stairwell that descended below through a layer of very old brickwork to a mud plaster floor. Although it seems that this mysterious underground layer had been inhabited by more recent people, the reason for this more modern invasion was more than likely due to the unusual celestial activities witnessed within the area in the 16th century. A total of four solar eclipses would have been visible from El Volcan in short succession. In AD 1521, 1538, 1539, and 1543. This of course being an extremely rare occurrence. Of course, this could have been the reason for the pyramid's initial construction, though the site clearly shows strong indications of being far older than this event. Regardless, profound questions arise from such a curious construction. For instance, if this was indeed a sacrificial mound, why was the top built to be concave? This obviously obscuring all those surrounding the building from seeing any sacrificial bloodletting. Benfer also noted that there are no volcanoes around El Volcan that would have served as models for its construction. No other structures like it have been found in Peru or indeed anywhere else on Earth. He will continue to explore the mysterious structure in the hope of possibly discovering artifacts which could shed light on the pyramid's true antiquity. This is clearly one very weird pyramid and a perplexing mystery to history.